got a lot to cover today, so let's get started. Today we're going to be going over project one. So I posted project one on uh, Wednesday, and hopefully each of you has had a chance to at least look at it briefly. Uh, it is due Monday, February 18th. That is uh, two weeks and one weekend from now. Uh, you are allowed to work in groups of up to two to three people. Um, and the assignment will be in Java with a little bit in Java CC, which is kind of like Yak. Um, I'll be uh, giving a tutorial on that today. Um, now the goal of this project is basically to familiarize uh, you with manipulating relational algebra expressions. Um, this is sort of the precursor to, uh, the, this is going to be the foundational piece of uh, work that we'll be doing for projects for the rest of the term. So uh, it's really important that you, you get this project uh, done correctly. Um, just to uh, clarify points, I added a little bit on uh, group submission instructions and reposted that on January 31st uh, yesterday. So if you haven't um, gotten that update, uh, make sure you do. Okay, so let me start off by addressing probably the question that's on most of your minds. Uh, how am I going to grade this? Well, basically I've given you a whole package of tests. Um, assuming you run all of these tests successfully, that is worth 90 points. You can get basically 90% of your grade will be succeeding on those tests. The remaining 10% will be succeeding on a couple of other tests that I'm going to sneakily add to that test suite. Um, so basically, that's roughly how I'm going to grade it. Um, any questions on that? Yes. So the, the basically will be there are a whole bunch of tests that are in the distribution that uh, you can download, um, and assuming you pass all of those tests, that is worth 90 points. Any any questions? Okay. So let's go over the actual assignment. Part one is going to be to build a relational algebra interpreter. This, you're going to be given a set of data files and a relational algebra tree, and your goal is going to be to evaluate that relational algebra tree. Um, I'm not looking for anything super fancy here. Any sort of basic algorithm is sufficient. Um, for selection and projection and union, you can use the straightforward uh, pipeline implementations we discussed a couple of days ago. Uh, for um, the file scan operator, standard job I.O. is going to be probably sufficient. Uh, for joins, uh, nested loops uh, are, again, sufficient. And for aggregates, uh, just a simple hash table implementation. Um, I'm not looking for any, uh, any implementations that require you to use anything beyond memory. This is, this is just to get you guys started. Um, so any questions on, on this part? This, uh, we went over most of these algorithms over the last few, um, the last few classes, so hopefully you should be fairly familiar with them. Um, any questions up to this point? OK, good. So now, yes? If we deliver something that is better performance, so will that be added to the rate? Not yet, but it, you will simplify your life for project three. So basically, if you do more work now, uh, your life will be easier down the road. So uh, basically, the short answer is not immediately, but yes, it is beneficial to do so. Any other questions? OK. So um, a little bit more on this. Um, the general, uh, the, probably the simplest way to implement this part is going to be to use a uh, standard uh, to create sort of a relational operator implementate an implementation for each relational operator. And the simplest way to do that is to use the iterator interface that I mentioned uh, a little while ago. Uh, essentially just have, uh, if you're familiar with Java iterators, this is essentially the same thing. Uh, and then to take, to create sort of a translation uh, piece of code that uh, assembles these relational <coughs> operators based on the relational algebra plan that I give you. Um, and finally, to, uh, this will also need a very simple uh, component that will evaluate uh, arithmetic expressions as well. Um, let me give you an example of an iterator. So the, one of the simplest things that you can do is implement projection. Uh, in 
instantiate it with uh, the various things that you are going to need. Uh, if you and then implement the two methods, uh, I guess has next and read next uh, as, as an example. Um, the projection operator will only run out of tuples as soon as its input runs out of tuples, and every time you read a tuple, you basically just rearrange it, reassemble it, and um, create sort of the output tuple from the input tuple. It's a one-to-one -one mapping. This is sort of the, the simplest possible thing that you can do. Uh, arithmetic may, may be a little bit trickier, and the most straightforward way to do this is you're basically going to get an arithmetic tree like this, um, and presumably when you're evaluating these arithmetic, expre arithmetic expressions, you're going to have a set of mappings from uh, attribute name to value. Uh, so you can create sort of a hash map for that, and then uh, just iterate up. Evaluate these expressions top down. So start from the very top. Uh, to evaluate the product, you're going to need to evaluate uh, each of the children. Um, do that. To evaluate the plus, you're going to need to evaluate each of each of its children. Uh, and then you can figure out a is five, three is three, five plus three is eight, two plus eight, and so forth. Um, and then you get the final result of the expression. Any questions on this? Okay. Um, all right. So now let me get to sort of the meat of, uh, of the talk today, um, and that's parsing SQL. Uh, so, quick show of hands. Uh, has anyone used? Uh, has anyone written a grammar or used a program like Yak before? Yak, Bison. Okay. Great. So I will be teaching you something today. Um, all right. So, uh, or is has anyone take, uh, taken a class on al well, presumably you've taken a class on uh, sort of algorithms and, and have uh, a familiarity with uh, what a, a grammar is? But just to uh, make sure we're all on the same page, um, I'm going to describe that as well. Um, so the, the basic idea of this part is you're going to start off by designing, uh, writing up a grammar for SQL, and then using a uh, sort of compiler compiler. Uh, Yak, Bison, and Java CC are examples of these. Uh, to basically create a little program that will parse in strings and produce uh, something more structured that's easier to work with. And it's essentially part of this grammar is going to be a specification for how uh, nodes in this, this tree represented by the grammar uh, should be interpreted. So okay, let's start with uh, what is a grammar. Uh, so a grammar, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, is a way of specifying a language. Uh, that is to say, some uh, way of defining uh, how you would interpret a word. Defining strings that are part of a language. So we have strings uh, such as, um, in this case, we have uh, three different, um, uh, sorry, we have two different uh, terminals here, uh, B and C. Each of those represents a certain character in, in the, the alphabet that we're assembling our strings out of. And this, this is, uh, a grammar is composed of a set of rules that look kind of like this. Uh, we're basically, here we're saying that A, and A uh, is, I, is one of the following. It's either a B followed by an A, uh, or it's just a B, or it's just a C. Um, so, that, uh, that said, if I were to also give you the additional rules that a B is the string B, and the rule that a C is a string C, uh, which of the following uh, would you uh, treat as valid A's? So is B a valid A? Yes. Is C a val valid A? Yes. Is B, C a valid A? Yes. 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 Okay. What about B, C, C? Why not? Yes, it is. So if, um, so, okay. So how would, we, how would we parse this? We start at the very top. Is this name? Which of these rules matches this? Or which of these rules matches, matches uh, this? Or can we match to this? Uh, sorry. So C, uh, an A can't be a C because uh, C is the string C. So this is, this could potentially be a BA. 
So we, uh, it's a B followed by something that is an A. But now we, okay, so we ignore this and ask, is this an A? Is this an A? No, because there's no rule uh, for CC, for no rule that would lead us to CC. What about BBBC? Is that a valid A? Yes. Good. Uh, what about CB? No. Okay. Uh, all right, so essentially um, a grammar is just a way of specifying a way for mapping uh, strings to these sort of, uh, sort of tree-like structures. For example, um, A is a B followed by a C. So uh, just to get you a little bit more onto this page, we're going to do a little quick exercise. Uh, so can we define, uh, turn to whoever's sitting next to you and uh, basically using this, this sort of rule, um, how would you define a grammar for basic arithmetic uh, using addition, multiplication, and negation?
Uh, it has a type, so every rule defines an object of a certain type. Uh, in this case, uh, objects of type program. It has a header where you can define uh, basically any, any piece of code to always get executed whenever that rule gets invoked. And the rule can potentially also have a set of arguments, uh, which we're going to mostly ignore. Now, the body of a rule, unlike a normal function, is in Java CC grammar definitions, uh, the body of a rule is a pattern. So um, here's a slide that just has all of those pointers on it. Um, a pattern is essentially one of these, uh, one of this chunk of, of the grammar definition. So the, the simplest pattern is just going to be a token. So all of the tokens in Java CC are separated by angle brackets. And if it turns out that you need the, the definition of uh, or what the token maps to, uh, you, can use, you can prefix it with a variable name equals, uh, and then that, the token's value will, will get assigned to that variable. Um, to give you an example of this, uh, we can define an integer as an integer token, and then this will assign uh, the value of that integer token to the variable i. You'll, uh, in a mo we'll get to in a couple of slides how exactly you use that i. Um, the other sort of simplest type of, uh, of pattern is that we can invoke another rule. So for example, we have uh, a rule named rule, and we can match anything that that rule would match. And once again, we can take whatever that rule, uh, whatever um, object that rule evaluates to, and assign it to a variable. Uh, we can also take sequences of patterns. So uh, you can separate patterns by spaces. And this will essentially match the first pattern followed by the second pattern, followed by the third pattern, and so forth. So let me give you an example of that. Um, for example, we can have um, an EOS token, which essentially might represent a semicolon. And we can have a rule that matches uh, statements in whatever language. and what this, this pattern will do is match a statement followed by an end of statement character, or a semicolon. And it will assign the value uh, to the variable s. Now we can actually use those variables by um, putting curly braces after the pattern. And if that pattern is matched, then the code, mm -hmm. the just regular Java code that appears in those curly braces will get executed. So one example of that might be to go back to our uh, integer example. So the int token uh, is going to match uh, is going to match uh, strings that represent integers. So we take that token, we assign it to the variable i. Or if, if this if this pattern matches, we're going to take the, the matched string, we're going to assign it to the uh, variable i, and then we can use that. Uh, variable uh, to compute expressions such as the integer value of uh, that string. Uh, so these, um, these tokens are all, all going to be uh, Java token objects, um, which is a class that will be generated uh, by Java CC. And i.image is the string value uh, of that token, the, the value of the string that is matched by that token. Uh, so any questions up to this point? Sort of get what this uh, what this expression is doing and how. Okay, let's move on. Um, questions? Um, okay, so we can make more complex patterns. So that's that's sort of the basic uh, pattern structure. We can we can um, combine patterns in sequences to make more complex patterns. Uh, but we can also add uh, certain regular expression operators. So if you're uh, familiar with re regular expressions, you're probably already familiar with the meanings of question mark plus and times. You can follow any pattern <coughs> with one of those symbols to indicate that that pattern should be repeated uh, some number of times. Um, the thing to note is that any code literal that appears in this pattern, and any one of those curly braces that appears in this pattern, uh, is going to be executed once for every single match that occurs. So if the match never, if there's no, nothing that matches this, uh, such as if you're using a question mark uh, and this pattern uh, doesn't match, then 
uh, the code block just won't get executed, or any sort of assignments that appear in there won't get executed. Uh, you can design your, um, your rules with that in mind. Yes? So uh, you can follow any pattern with curly braces containing Java code. And if this pattern is matched, then this Java code will get executed. And the example of that would be to, um, so if this, if this token gets matched, it gets assigned to i, and then this code block will get executed, and the value of the entire rule will be represented by the value of parse, uh, what we get by calling parseInt on the string that is matched by this token. <coughs> Uh, no, sorry. Um, I I will be the token. So, so the, this this entire thing is going to be represented by an object of the class token, and uh, this is a class that gets generated by uh, Java CC, and it will be added to. Um, it just gets generated by Java CC and put uh, in the same place that the uh, other classes that it generates will go. Um, and that token object will get assigned to I. I dot image is going to be the string value of the, uh, the, the sorry it's going to be the string that the token I matched. So the string in this case may be uh, minus one three five six, um, and then we call whatever functions we want on that object on that string. Uh, I didn't have space to put the full integer dot parseInt, but essentially uh, if you have some function called parseInt that takes that integer and puts it into a uh, integer string and puts it into an integer, uh, you will get negative 13,050. Um, and then this return statement applies to the entire grammar rule. Uh, so that the entire, the value of uh, the thing that the entire grammar rule matches will be um, the return value of parseInt. And I'll give you a full example of this in, in a couple of slides. So yes. what does uh, int base mean? Sorry? What does int base mean? Um, oh, sorry. The, um, if I have a uh, if I have a grammar rule defined uh, called int base, um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, ignore that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, the, uh, the meaning of the return statement will be uh, clear in a couple of slides when I give you a, a, a full example of of, uh, of one of these. Uh, but essentially, uh, the so each uh, grammar rule, like the, the full grammar rule, defines a function. And so what you're doing here is essentially returning from the grammar rule. Uh, what's the image? Uh, image is the string that the token matches. So uh, the token class has a field called image, which is the uh, string that the token. Yeah, so parse it converts that string to an integer. Okay, so you can take, um, you can repeat patterns several times, um, or no times at, at all. Um, and one other example might be, so you can define an entire program using these regular expressions as, um, so a statement followed by an end of statement character, a semicolon if you will. Um, and a program consists of one or more statements followed by semicolons, and then that entire thing had better be followed by the end of the um, Does everyone sort of follow this pattern? We're not actually doing anything with the statements, this is just matching this, the expression. Okay, and the final component of uh, patterns is uh, you can have uh, two possibilities. So just like we have an integer or a plus a or a times a, you can have pattern one or pattern two. And uh, the meaning of this is basically that it's going to match one of the two. Um, now, there's a little bit of a catch here. Um, when you have one of these or operations, uh, the parser is only going to look at uh, the next n tokens when deciding which of these patterns to follow. And once it makes that decision, uh, it's not going to go back. So uh, if it turns out that the deciding factor is the third token, uh, and you only, you're only looking 
uh, at the next two tokens, then this rule will potentially lead to some mistakes. Um, the, this is, this uh, parameter, the, the, the number of tokens that you, uh, you look at, uh, that the parser will look at, is known as the look ahead parameter. And uh, depending on how you write your grammar, uh, the Java CC compiler may suggest uh, using a look ahead value that is greater than the default of uh, one. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at uh, a couple of examples. Uh, does everyone, everyone sort of get that, that idea? That, um, uh, so in this case, this would also be a token, this would also be a token, and this would also be a token. Um, so when making this decision, we get to here. If we have a look ahead value of one, we're going to look at a uh, token, say, uh, an integer. So the, sorry, the, the first token in some string, say, uh, five plus six. If we look at the first token here, it's going to be a five. And that five is going to map to an integer. But there's more to the string as well. Um, on the other hand, uh, the, so these rules are going to be evaluated in, in order. And so the, the parser is going to look at this. It's going to say, hey, there's a five. Great, that's an integer. I'm going to match that. And uh, OK, well, that's, that's the thing. That's, that's everything. Great, I'm done. And it's going to return five. Um, if you reorder these uh, so that the integer, you might need to reorder these so that the integer uh, field is last. If that happens, you end up with another problem. So the first rule here is a plus a, which kind of fits. So we're going to go here. We're going to say uh, we're going. The parser is going to look at these rules. It's so going to decide a plus a. Um, okay. Well, that means I need to match an a. Okay, well, um, what is an A? Well, an A is an A plus A. Okay? An A is an A, it's just going to go into an infinite loop. Uh, so in general, you probably want to have at least a little kind of two. Um, so that you can figure out that the next character is a plus, and therefore, uh, this is actually going to be five plus six. Um, there's a couple of other ways of addressing that particular problem. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, um, so let me give you an example of uh, some of these rules. So here is one um, example of a full grammar uh, rule, the one that I showed you earlier. The rule is called program, and it returns an instance of class program. Now in the header, I'm going to define, uh, essentially just define these, um, a couple of variables that I'm going to use throughout the rest of the, the program. Uh, and instantiate one of them as, as a new instance of this program class. Now, uh, so let's, let's break this apart. Um, these, these parentheses match one thing. And that's going to be a statement followed by an end of statement character. The statement expression is going to get assigned to the variable s. And then if this entire thing gets matched, we're going to execute this block of code. This block of code is basically going to call p.add statements with s. So we're going to just keep, uh, we're going to add that statement to the program. Um, now you'll note that there's a plus character here. So we're going to repeat that process every single time we find an appropriate match. So every single, uh, so basically for every statement in this program, we're going to add it to the program. And then the last character had better be an end of file. Once we reach that end of file, if the entire thing matches, then this entire thing will just return uh, the program that it represents. Are there any questions on this? Uh, that's uh, so. The per uh, basically all of the classes I'm defining here are things that uh, you have to. So it's basically whatever whatever you you, you have. Uh, program is not explicitly part of Java system. Any any other questions? Okay. Um.
Um, so let me, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, oh, and does this answer your question about how return gets used? Uh, yeah. Okay. So if you say one time for the entire loop of the string that you match, so it's return once. Yes, so it, it, exactly. So the, uh, every time uh, return uh, returns from the entire rule. Uh, now you can have nested rules. So for example, I have this uh, call to the statement rule. So I have to have some way of defining a statement. Uh, and let me give you that as another example. So uh, for our project, there are going to be two types of statements. There are going to be create table statements, and there are going to be uh, select statements. Uh, so one way you might implement that is to have uh, one of these option rules. Um, and there are two options. Either a statement, is, a statement is either a select or it's a table. And I have individual rules for defining uh, each of those, which I'm not going to do. Um, so a statement is either a select sta uh, statement, in which case I'm simply going to return, um, return that statement, or it's a table, in which case I'm going to return that statement. Uh, and a typical way of uh, encoding the fact that, that each of these might be defined using different classes uh, would be to use some sort of wrapper class that uh, just encodes both of them. Does everyone follow what's going on here? Yes? Yes, exactly. So you'd have rules for select a, a rule for a table. And uh, statements, the class you'd also have to define. Uh, so, uh, in general, the, the best way to approach these kinds of things is top-down. So, write out your grammar, um, and then try and figure, uh, so you have the, the big thing, which is a select statement. What is a select statement? It's uh, some token followed by, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you might define it as a select token, uh, the, the word, the string select, followed by a target list. Okay, now you need to define a target list. How do you get, define that? Well, that's a comma-separated list of targets. And just keep, keep going down from the top, and that'll, uh, that'll get you to uh, your full grammar. OK, uh, one last example. Um, so uh, the int base uh, came around from uh, this rule. Uh, so we can define uh, the thing that gets returned doesn't necessarily have to be a class. It can be a primitive type. Uh, so in this case, I have a rule that defines an arbitrary integer as an integer, rather than a token. So I might have a token called decimal, which represents just an arbit arbitrary string, um, integer string. And then in order to parse that into an actual integer that I can use more easily, um, I have this rule. If something matches a decimal, put it into t and then just parse, um, parse that integer out into um, an integer return that, and you have an integer. Wait, wait, why the decimal? Well, so you have to define the decimal token. In the same way. Sorry? In the same? Uh, In the same grammar. Yeah, well, so to I haven't gotten to tokens yet. So any questions so far? Yes? Uh, can include 
the phrase include case. Um, that is, uh, these brackets don't mean this is optional. These brackets are actually part of the, um, basically this means that any token inside here will be, uh, will have ignore, uh, include the brackets in, in this uh, if we want any, all of the tokens to be uh, case insensitive. Um, right, so you can either define a series of regular expressions uh, that define characters that should be skipped, or you can define a series of uh, regular expressions that define individual tokens. Um, here's a freebie. Uh, skip statements that will get rid of all white space. So a space, an alone space character with nothing around it should be skipped, or any uh, new line sequence should also be skipped. Um, right. So one example of, uh, so let's look at some uh, token definitions. Uh, the simplest kind of token is a string literal. So you have a string, that, is, that defines a regular expression. And so every, every string select will get mapped to a select token, or a token called select. Um, this is not strictly regular expressions in the correct sense, but it's more or less, it basically, if anyone who's familiar with regular expressions uh, shouldn't necessarily have a huge amount of difficulty adapting to this. Uh, the main difference is that uh, the special symbols for the special regular expression symbols uh, are outside of the strings. So, you, so for example, this defines uh, an optional leading uh, dash followed by a character class uh, consisting of characters between the character 0 and the character 9. And that can repeat one or more times. So essentially a decimal, uh, a decimal number of the string. Uh, any questions on this? So you can put as many skip statements as you like. Um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, maybe I misunderstood. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. So um, this basically the you can think of this as sort of a state machine. So if you are not inside a token, then it will the skip uh, the skip regular expressions uh, are stop being relevant once you start parsing a token. Once you match the first character of a token, um, then uh, basically the, these, these stop being relevant. So you can have, uh, if you have, have, for example, a definition of a string, which I'll show you in a moment, um, then there can be spaces inside this, the quoted string, uh, but um, the white spaces outside of the quoted string will get ignored. Does that answer your question? Anything else? You have to do this yourself. So you, you have to explicitly tell it uh, what characters should be ignored. Whenever I use Java, <coughs> this, is, this is pretty much my. Yeah, this is a free beat. Um, any questions on this? Um, it will not create tokens. They simply get, uh, those characters get ignored. Uh, so skip. Uh, so basically, there are two kinds of uh, two kinds of statements here. Uh, the outer mode, so it's uh, the word skip followed by a colon, followed by an open curly brace, followed by a, a series of regular expressions, uh, or the word token followed by uh, the word open bracket ignore underscore case close bracket colon curly brace, and then a series of token definitions. So skip is not a token. It's uh, it, you're you're actually saying. These characters, um, anytime you encounter this character or these characters, um, it's irrelevant. Uh, you can also have a skip, for example, for uh, dealing with comments. Okay? Yes. Uh, sorry, that should be in the previous. Okay, um, one other. Uh, two more examples. 
Uh, so you can define for uh, a, a quoted string. Uh, by the way, something to be aware of is that SQL uses single quotes for, string, for quoted strings, not double quotes. Uh, this throws a lot of people off. So a string is a single quote followed by uh, you use a, a twiddle to indicate uh, the negation of a character class. So basically a single quote followed by anything that is not a single quote followed um, or a uh, escaped single quote um, or an escaped backslash. So in this case I'm using double escapes uh, because uh, this is a Java string, and so in order to specify the Java string backslash, you have to escape the backslash. Um, escape characters are evil, um, just use this. Uh, the other, another possible definition would be a uh, token of some sort, and this might be uh, any sort of character um, or an underscore followed by any sort of uh, decimal or um, any questions on this? So basically this defines any, any sort of um, uh, a variable name, for example. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, let me do a uh, quick... Uh, okay, so... Uh, Alright, so this is basically the directory that uh, you guys are getting. Um, there is, uh, so you can, there's this, uh, all of the directory, uh, all of this stuff is in source, and there is this test directory that contains a bunch of SQL files. Um, there's also the, uh, source, yes. there's also this test directory, which contains essentially the same set of queries, uh, but, uh, using Java classes that just define the relational algebra tree. Um, now I haven't, um, now this directory here doesn't have anything implemented yet, uh, so what you should get if you run um, Java on one of those test classes is something that looks like this. Uh, so over here I have, um, so over here, starts off with uh, essentially the syntax tree of the relational algebra expression that's, um, that you're getting, uh, followed by all of the errors that uh, occur during execution of that. Um, so to answer your question, um, essentially the relational algebra expression, uh, the, the two string function on the relational algebra expressions will kind of like this. And all of this information is on the uh, is in the PDF that's included in the uh, in the assignment code. So that should uh, uh, now what you should see uh, once everything gets implemented is something more like this: uh, pass relational algebra test, and then there is another. Uh, so each of these uh, test classes, you can either call them uh, just randomly, in which case they'll uh, try and get your um, test to see whether your code uh, works on the relational, just executing the raw relational algebra expression. Uh, and there's also a, a thing that will test to see if it works on the SQL version as well. Um, so, So here, uh, this, this first test is the absolute simplest possible thing that you can do. Select one. Um, and you, there's a script that will also uh, call that. Um, and that should give you something kind of like this. Expression and basically a, a formatted version of the, uh, of the thing that you are running. Ignore that bit of topic. Okay, uh, so with that, um, are there any? Oh, um, one last thing. Um, so there is a file called SQL.java. I expect you to replace that file with uh, essentially something that you create, which has a couple of functions defined. Uh, one of these is, for example, uh, exec file, which you call it with a file, 
and it executes the, the file, uh, all of the instructions in the file and returns the values uh, therein. Um, the way you can create that, um, so in this case I've instantiated uh, the, the parser class that I built using Java CC is called SQL. Um, create a new, uh, here I'm creating a new parser. Uh, pars uh, program is the sort of root uh, expression of my grammar. And then, so I'm parsing out uh, the program. And then I have a class here called runtime that's actually executing the, the program. Um, any questions on, on how to use the output of Java CC? Okay, so with that, um, testing 